The who? The where? The why? The what? When? How? Episode 95. Is it? 19. 1986. 1995. 1995. Excellent work. Mm -hmm. Excellent work. Where are we? Where are we? We are. We are 2019 now. Yeah. We're not really. We're looking. We're in that place. Right. Fucking A. Don't ruin the illusion, Greg. Our last episode was, of course, a 2018 rap, rap, rap. And uh, we thought we'd just chill out on this one now. There's yeah. a lot to fit in. Let's fucking talk some silly fucking stories. Let's, let's, let's just be a bit silly for a bit. bit like, uh, you know? I missed geese dropping last week. I know. Miss Geese dropping. I've, so. I've got plenty. Have you? Yeah. Oh, right. Are they new or the ones you've been building over time? Uh, one was as um, as recent as Christmas Eve. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. I haven't picked them up for a while, but I have got a nice little burr for them. You know what? Let's go into Geese dropping where, of course, we snippets of overheard conversation and we read them out and try and figure out what's going on. Actually, we don't. We just comment on it and laugh. Ha <laughs> ha. Geese dropping. <laughs> What we got, Joe? Why don't you kick off if you've got such a, a well of geese drops? <laughs> well, let me tell you. I've, well, I've got something. Well, well, here. well. I've realised. I realised that when I write down my geese drops, I don't write anything down to kind of explain them. Well, that's well, that's part of it, really. Yeah, we do over explain them. I think too much. I think we're so. not really meant so let's to. Just, I'll just, I'll just, I'm not going to rapid fire, but I'll, without any explanation, I'll just say them. Yeah. He's done both his legs in. <laughs> Lovely. Stirred up somewhere. Oh, that's good. That sounds like it should be like, you know, it's a guy lying at the bottom of a ladder or something. <laughs> just, just two just broken, a bike two broken legs for Christmas, please. Just a passerby goes past. He's, no, it doesn't even help him. Just shouts yeah? it out. Nah, he's done nah. both his legs in. Nah, sorry, I got distracted. Nah, some bloke on the floor. Oh, no, me less than that. No, he's done you both his legs on. in. I have done me legs in. You're right. Ouch. This, uh, this next one, it just says, uh, in, in a country accent. Oh, I oh, love Sherbert. Oh, wait, we thought you weren't watching us do powers. <laughs> no, I watched, I, I remember where I was. I was downstairs in the shop and this old lady was literally buying like <laughs> all the Sherbert. All the Sherbert. She put it up there and she kept going and there coming back. Was. So she went and got like the tubes of it and then like Jesus. the packs and then put it on there and just confessed just, oh, you love Sherbert. Oh, that's all the Christmas shopping done. That is it. Oh, well, Auntie Granny. Treated, her, gonna, treated uh, herself. Auntie's going to give us fucking Sherbert again. <laughs> treated herself well that day. Uh, heard this one on the train in Wimbledon. Oh, you what? You nearly slept with them. Which one? Oh, not that one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Left a friend very, in a club uh, on a night out of a group of lads. Very, very, very good friend there, oh. uh, giving her honest opinion yeah. on uh, her conquest choice. Not, oh, really? I really liked him. Oh, oh God, yeah, he was, no. oh, yeah, he was lovely. That sounds like they were like out the night before and one left when the other one stayed out. Not, um... What happened with those lads? This, this, I believe, if I speak correctly, <laughs> this was sent by Lucy. Right. Um, it just says, he's very small, yeah, but he's got a huge dick. <laughs> but I took it too deep. I gagged and it all came up, so I grabbed a towel and threw up. Jesus Christ, that's quite so a... That uh... was heard in the toilet. Wow, I wonder what that Mate, happened. you know what? I think we need to somehow get into a, a female lavatory. Yeah. I'll and be... just sit in there and overhear <laughs> the shit. That... In there. Because, I God. Think, I think we'd have to send a Trojan horse in. Or not us dress up as a worker. I mean, I feel like I feel like we'd be a bit more subtle than a Trojan horse. <laughs> we dress horse. up as like the two old deers and like Harry Enfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, young lady, hello, young man. I'll, uh, I'll dress up as like the, the African perfume supplier. <laughs> <laughs> no splash, no gash. <laughs> Man, that's what they're saying. The med. Oh. You're not a perfume <laughs> dispenser at all. <laughs> this perfume comes right off. Look. <laughs> You're not even black. Oh no, yeah, we have to send someone in. I think an operative. I know. We got a few. We can send them in. Yeah, we have got a few. <laughs> you make it sound like pimps, Greg. <laughs> Right, okay, I have some geese jobs. Oh, I wasn't finished. Okay, well, I thought um, we, could inter we could interact. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. yeah. I've only got one left, though, so it doesn't it doesn't really seem the point in me just sort of bumbling on for one more. I'll just do mine quickly. <laughs> Basically, I, this... I like it, you take control, Joe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, in a, this was in a panicked voice. I heard this uh, out my window, actually. It was wow. uh, a car came pulling up, put on the brakes, and then the guy got out. And he, t he was going into the shop. He turned back around and shouted at the car, Do you know anything about wine? <laughs> 
I loved the panic in his voice. Like yeah. he was like late for a dinner yeah. party or something. It was Christmas Eve I and he's just like, fuck, the, I forgot the wine. I think walking into the Tolworth convenience store, you don't need to know too much about the wine. No, right? no, no. I mean, they got an all right selection yeah. of plonk in there. Yeah, like, yeah it's like, <laughs> just grab one. It's fine. You'll be all right. Red I said, or white. I was, I, House red, please. I put, it, <laughs> I, put it on, uh, I put it on Facebook during on Christmas Day because I kept using different words for like alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I tried like, to think of one. I got, uh, I got like, my sister got me a bottle of Kraken. So I was just like, oh yeah, good bit of grog that. <laughs> And then, like, we sat down to dinner, and I was just like, "Yeah, get on the plonk." <laughs> like, I don't know what to, I don't know what become of me. I really don't. But then it did it did opt for me. It did opt to me uh, to then open the question to Facebook, and people replied. Um, I kept trying to think of like a normal name, like Steve Madison. Or something. <laughs> yeah. I kept trying Isn't to think. Isn't that the guy but, who makes but, shoes? But I kept trying to think of just a name, like a normal name. Yeah. And when I came back to it, I had like 47 comments. And I was like, oh, mine's just going to look stupid. No, nah, it was just fucking Jack and Harry mine's just going, going back and stupid, forth. They were it? just saying things at I the end of it. I did see lots of Jack popping up. Mm. But yeah, it was. Uh, so what are, you, what are your uh, what are your geese drops for uh, the new year? A young girl said this. Well, I never thought I'd be feeding my mum in the street. What? <laughs> I beg your pardon? <laughs> there was a couple with the news agent. I walked and I left it. They were outside. And the mum had like two, a shop, bag of shopping in each hand. The little girl was like feeding her a bit of chocolate. <laughs> and I just heard her say, I thought you said feeling. And as I, walked past, I just heard her say, Well, I never thought I'd be feeding my mum in the street. <laughs> Maybe in bed. <laughs> Next one's good. I can't ram it down my mouth quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> what a poor choice of words. I can't ram it down my mouth quick enough. Someone having a dessert or something. Me and Lee heard that while we were walking in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Lee heard it while walking in the woods. That's like, generally, brilliant. we heard it while walking in the woods. Came to a nice looking house down this muddy drive, and this woman who looked like she was ready to go ride a horse walked past us. And as she walked towards us, she shouted back at the person, I can't ram it down my mouth quick enough. Probably and I laughed, yeah. turned, and instantly <laughs> made eye contact with me and Lee, and everything she knew was there. And we just, she knew. <laughs> and maybe she was just eating a protein bar or something, you know? Something, like, oh, yeah, I think she was something a cake innocent. or something. Yeah, a cake. <laughs> Who goes horse riding and eating a cake? <laughs> fucking posh people, man. <laughs> Just walking around with like a fucking, <laughs> what do you call it? The, what's the red one? My nice Victoria Red sponge. velvet. My nice Victoria Nah, sponge. a red velvet on the fucking back of their stallion. Black gatto, like a, like a saucer of like a nice, nice silverware fork. Galloping around naked like they're in Coventry. Yeah, that, what's was good, name? that was a good one to hear in the woods. Yeah, no, that is, that it's a bit, in, in all the, you know what? Sometimes it's where you hear them. It's there, not what there, you hear, yeah, it's where you hear there them. There was something amazing about the walk, I've got to say. Quite early on, we passed up some fucking little, like, fucking rude boy in, quite early on on the walk. And he was, like, playing his fucking phone loud out of his pocket, listening to really fucking just shit music. Yeah, yeah. Like, bowling down the street, like, yeah, yeah. I think it was actually in Guildford High Street before we even got to the start of the walk. I was like, yeah, yeah, and we're like, fuck's sake. Anyway, a few hours into this walk, walking down this r- fucking long fucking road straight for the woods. So old deer is coming towards us, like a little hiker woman. Yeah. And she got a bit closer. And I don't know where it's coming from, but she was playing music out loud as she walked, presumably from her phone. But like really old, like <laughs> it sounded like grammar, like it was on a gramophone. Like really old fucking wartime, like, yeah, like <laughs> Oh, had some darling. Yeah, yeah, Won't kind of, you touch was, my knees? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> and it was just like, oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> like, glad I saw that. I've always wondered what if that had happened. And I just saw it happen. She's just walking around listening to like pack up your troubles <laughs> in your old kit bag and <laughs> yeah. shit. <laughs> okay, I got. I remember the good days. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was a world war going on. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a um, one more. All right. <clears throat> I need to get some gorges to squeeze my grapes to make my wine mother. <laughs> <coughs> oh, easy boy, easy, <coughs> easy, easy. There it is. That's the one. <coughs> what artisan? He, shoots, he scores. What artisan cake fair? Did you hear that? <laughs> I was at Wilkins. <laughs> oh fucking hell! <laughs> They got up, Mark. I was just getting into the lift with Indiana at Wilkins's, and this guy, this older guy, came with like his old dear mum. And we're just like, well, one more, sorry. And it was him. And as we left the lift, he said, he turned to his, he must have been, he was like his late 60s. And she was like an old dear in the wheelchair. And he turned to her and was like, I need to get some gorgeous to squeeze my grapes to make my wine mother. <laughs> like in that tone Christ. of voice as well. Come on, I'll try his wine. Like she was like, why are we here? Like yeah, he yeah, was like, yeah. oh, you know why? No, I mean, in general, I have dementia. I brought you out. <laughs> I brought you out here so you, Where just, to get you at the, just to get you at the home. They suddenly need to take you out more. And I thought, oh, I need to buy gorges to make my wine. So I'll take mother with me. Guess we're at the house for 43 minutes. Fuck, fuck where I am. Who am I? <laughs> <sighs> 
Thanks, for Wilkinson, for getting my wine. Gorgeous. Oh man, that was a good. That's that's a good like round up to the end of the year, isn't it? That's a good. That's a good old geese drop ending. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Even though we're in the year. And what? And here's well, this is everything we've heard last year. Yeah. God, yeah. we should do. We should do an episode which is just one big long geese drop well, it, from every e- from for episode 100 we'll just we'll just do all the geese drops well all, the, all again all the ones we have yeah no we'll just do it from episode one through like play all as one yeah episode, yeah yeah not, not like reread them out <laughs> these are the things we could we... do it as like one of those friends in, episodes in where like... three <laughs> years this is what we've overheard you can do it in one of those episodes of a sitcom where they do the it's the filler episode and it's just like flashback episodes like shows things that happen oh they all sat around a sofa and they talk about all their favourite times and like yeah. happening yeah. it'll be like that asking an episode do you remember that geese drop in episode one? Oh yeah <laughs> and then when it finishes do you remember that geese drop in episode two <laughs> right you ready to get weird mate always right, this why is, do you think you're here this <laughs> this story we've uh, we've covered similar stories in the past and uh, it also brings in another element of the story we discussed, which is bad tattoos. And, uh, you know, there's a, it combines a lot of stories we've discussed in the past. It's kind of a mix of them all. It's an interesting one. Yeah. Hits all the right spots for us, Joe. It does. Has yeah, no, it ha- really, ha- really tickles yeah, my cheese. It has spot. everything we want in a story. This is the story of a woman who is engaged to a chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> and she now has a tattoo. I wasn't, I wasn't life. expecting that. So now... <laughs> Ghosts weren't enough. Yes. What's the dumbest thing you could think of marrying? A chandelier. A fucking hell. Sh- like, <laughs> so they say. No, nah, mate, there's something way more useless than that. A left shoe. <laughs> a roll of duct tape. A penny farthing. <laughs> a prit stick. A fumble. A prit stick. <coughs> a fucking Tipex mouse dispenser. Like <laughs> <laughs> the, the, have you a been... My Little Pony pencil sharpener. <coughs> a pog. Have you a go go. <laughs> <coughs> a door handle. Have you uh, have you been looking through the Staples catalogue recently? Because you you're listing off everything. <laughs> no, Filofax Christmas paper in Egypt colour. <laughs> Someone didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. Who's the Egypt as a colour there as well? That doesn't work. Egypt. Um, so this is the story of Amanda Liberty, who got a tattoo. Of She's her, taking of, a fucking of, liberty. Of her fiance, a chandelier called Lumaire. That's the one from uh, Beauty and the Beast, isn't it? Lumaire. Isn't that the French chandelier from Beauty it's very and the racist, Beast? Very racist of you there, Greg, to, Amanda uh, to, to has just, a, uh, ex- assume, I think it is. assume those sort of things. Amanda has a simple portrait of her beloved on her arm, designed by Alice Perrin of Tattoo Fixers. Ooh, she went big. Go, Amanda, big, or, Amanda, go big or go home. Amanda and Lumiere became engaged last year after she popped the question. Funny that. But it's only now that Amanda has taken it to the next step of the commitment. A permanent inking of the object she loves. No, you usually get married after Fucking the Fucking each other royal. Doesn't go engagement, tattoo, wedding. She straddles the chandelier nightly. Amanda identifies as an objectum sexual. Objectum sexual. Which means she's attracted to objects, not people. Her first love was a drum kit. <laughs> 2018, where you can just make shit up. Her first love was a drum kit. Followed by the Statue of Liberty. Who she changed her last name for. There you go. Holy fuck. I just love America. Love me some America. I just love me some fucking stuff. But what attracted her to Lumia, you mate? You know, if you're married to the Statue of Liberty. Foreign, innit? And a fucking chandelier catches your eye. That's got to be a big, that's a big jump. That is. Sex must have been interesting. Greg, in all of these scenarios, I think sex must have been interesting. How did she have sex with the Statue of Liberty? Lumia, the centuries old chandelier. It was love at first sight. Gold digger. She's I, a gold digger. I was excited to see the end result, said Amanda. Before I got it done, I was very nervous about the needle. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but it wasn't too nerve-wracking. Oh, but I'll stick a chandelier up my cunt. The first time I saw the tattoo, it was amazing. I was so pleased to see the final result. It was incredible. Lemire also thought it was brilliant. Of course she gave me the energy, telling me it was great. So oh, she? Oh, it's a lesbian. Uh, Damn. Lesbian. All right, now I'm interested. She tells me she doesn't like these things, but she really likes the tattoo. Fucking hell. <laughs> mate, to be fair, you is could... Is this a chandelier talking? Mate, right now, though, you could you could easily think of a sex act and call it chandeliering. You could. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listeners, I'm sure if you're intrigued by the story, you might have Googled it already. But I'm going to show Joe a quick picture of the article has of the uh, chandelier tattoo. I mean, yeah, it's basic. Yeah, well, basic can still be nice. It's 
Yeah, but you, I mean, if you're I mean, gonna if you're gonna be I mean, if you're gonna do something nice. mental like marry a chandelier, you might want to fucking put a bit it's more. A, it's a bad picture, let's be fair. L- L- uh, Lumiere started life in Germany 91 years ago and met Amanda when she spotted the chandelier on eBay. <laughs> so she's. <laughs> She put a bid in of four hundred pounds and had her love shipped over to hang in her home. Fuck I'm gonna marry hell. that chandelier one day. So Amanda is in an open relationship with Lumer. What Sha- with other fucking light mm. options? Sharing her love with twenty five other chandeliers in her home. Fucking hell. She takes one twenty five? She takes Where one Where the fuck does she live? She takes one slimmer chandelier called Jewel into bed each night for a cuddle. Bit of a slag, really, isn't she? But it was Umer who Amanda proposed to on Valentine's Day 2016. They hadn't yet made plans for the wedding. I can't... This is in the Metro. Like, I just don't know what's happening. This is in the Metro? Yeah. That Mate, sometimes that paper is the onion. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, we don't have anything booked yet. I have friends all over the world and all of them want to be there. I don't want to be married with lots of people there. There's a picture of her here kissing the chandelier. Well, sadly, they couldn't... Oh, my fucking God. You know what? She's she's exactly what I thought she'd look like. Yeah. Again, Google people. She's such a beautiful shape. I really feel amazing energy coming from her. Apparently, he's going to wear a red bow tie for Christmas. Of course. People just think I'm batty. They don't take the time to get to know me. I. You know what? Let's get her on. None of her f- uh, chandeliers are jealous of each other. That's because they're not real. <laughs> when she met him, they don't. They don't. They don't have emotions. She knew it was love at first sight. Good would you would her. you sit down I with feel like her? I did an agony on. <laughs> would you sit down with her for an hour and listen to her explain <sighs> it? Yeah. I would. I don't know if I'd want to. That's what we need. This is where this I mean, we've been doing this podcast for three years now. Oh, and yeah, you know well, what? We need to take it in a direction at least. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta go in some sort of direction. Let's just this we'll find these mental people <laughs> and we'll just give them a chance to explain. But then they have to for they have to then sit here and take But well, you want them to come the, here? Yeah. We sit down, we interview we'll them. We'll pay and then, your Uber fare. <laughs> and then we'll ask a fuckload of questions. Like what? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll bring her on and just belittle her. No. No, 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 no. We're not this morning. Yeah. <laughs> we're giving them a chance Sounds to... like we're going to be from the guest no, again. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we'll sit here and we'll hap- I will happily let them explain the situation in the most like obvious way they want to, uh, wherever possible. In my bed. But no. <laughs> they're just going to have to withstand that I am going to have some questions. <laughs> I love it if they came in, in the first time they explained it. You were like, you know what, I get that. And it's like, you know what? Usually we get these people on. Don't even get me started on the girl who fucked trees. Uh, yeah, but, there's a few more now. Yeah. But um, I don't know. If that's... <laughs> I like the sound of that. Yeah. Yeah. A few more trees. <laughs> but um, I f- you know what? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. What's the next story? <laughs> oh god. Okay, that was pretty shocking though. That's just fucking. That's, but that's just 2018. Fucking it. That's well, just it in a fucking. This new is story. another 2018 style story. I don't want to be like everyone else, so I'm going to make up some really weird shit and then just call it like a gender option. This one's a bit of a weird one because I feel they're really trying to make a really big story out of it when it's not really that big a story. It's just something stupid that happened. But it's such a long article, so I'm not going to read it all. I'm just like, God, there can't be that much news in this. But anyway, this was a story of a woman who cancelled her baby shower because, and I quote, her fake ass family had been taking the piss out of the name she had chosen for her unborn child. What, what name did you choose, Greg? So, well, it kind of only tells you the first name, but it... Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> okay, so... A screenshot of the woman's rant online was posted. Right. Family, when she was addressing people, being like, you know, she addressed... <laughs> addressing her post to members of the Squire Sebastian Senator Baby Shower. What? Members of the Squire Sebastian Senator Baby Shower. This is what she addressed the group to. So Not I guess a surname Squire, involved in that. Squire Sebastian Senator. And she said, I'm cancelling the event and I will text you soon if you're invited to my smaller, more exclusive party where no, <laughs> one, where no one will judge me. And everyone was like, why are you doing this? And she was like, because you will be talking shit about my unborn baby. An unborn child? How can you judge an unborn child? What's wrong with you? With ease. To say this, frankly, my friends and family have treated me like total shit. They spread rumours and lies about my child. No, I'm not crazy. I'm not mentally unstable. No, I'm not drunk when I named my child. No, this is not his full name. Squire Sebastian Senator is only his first name. (laughs) 
Uh, I don't think it actually has what the entire name is, though. Squire Sebastian Sellator. My baby's name will be a revolution. It will push people to question everything. How's, Why, yeah, well, how's, how's Sellator spelled? Is that S-E-L? Senator, Senator, S-E-N-A-T-O-R. Oh, Senator. Yeah, Senator. I thought Senator. you said Sellator. I was I'm like, I want to find out what that means. It sounded like some... My baby's name will be a revolution. It will push people to question everything. Why name your baby boring and overused names like Joshua, Brian, Sam, Having Nick, a dig, having Mark, a dig, having Bella, a dig. Marina, etc. When you can name it something special. Something like Squire Sebastian Senator. <laughs> your kid's going to hate you. Your kid's going to change his fucking name. <laughs> doesn't have like the whole thing. Some people were like, you know, this is the next step up from like John Smith. Some people were like, this is, <laughs> this is going to, one person wrote, this is going to the new normal. Prepare yourselves. Yeah. And they're right. Some people quite like their name, but it doesn't have the full name. It just has that bit on there, which is nuts. That's bad enough. Yeah, it is bad enough. I agree. That is bad enough. That's when we talked about it, odd names like before, but when all your family are like, what are you doing? <laughs> Mate, this is, this is it. This is everyone's fucking need for validation. I need to stand out more than everyone else so I can be fucking noticed. So my child's going to This is what we've become. I hear oh, that the couple that named their kid Adolf Hitler, didn't they get arrested for something? For, no, for wasn't it the, uh, the guy who taught his dog to um, Zig Heil every swear, time swear. Hitler was on TV? <laughs> I swear it was the uh, pa parents were arrested that named their kid Adolf Hitler, but they were arrested for doing that. Like. Oh, not because they murdered people. No, well, not yet. Not yet. No, still young. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. I, I mean, know. that's... <laughs> oh, God. Just They've both been very 2018 stories, those two. Yeah, but I mean, it's, well, it's just it going to carry on into 2019. It's only going to get worse. It's true. So let's talk about Korean babies' foreskins. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is weird. Okay. Is, this, uh, is this about Kate Beckinsale yeah, fucking face cream? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw this. So back in May, Sandra Bullock caused a bit of a storm when she revealed that she was getting the foreskins of Korean babies injected into her face in an effort to keeping her looking young and viral. She looks great. Apart from, yeah, but she kind of looks like one of the squinty. puppets. From, uh, no, she looks like one of the puppets in Dark Crystal. Like her lips yes. a bit. She looks like that. Very, very valid. Yeah. That's, but well, you would, that's all I see. Well, she, sometimes... Don't get me wrong. Like face speed, was a bit, speed face Sandra was Bullock. a bit pointy in a gravity in 3D. Mm. No, that was good 3D, IMAX 3D. And I was a bit like, well, fucking hell, our lip's going to fucking smack me in a minute. Jesus. No, <laughs> no Sandra. <laughs> I'm happily married. Anyway, it turns out this trend is spreading across Hollywood. The latest celebrity to come abroad in the new revolutionary practice is Kate Beckinsale. Beckinsale. She posted the following message on her Instagram, which she has since deleted. After a long flight, I do like to lie down and be covered in the mask of liquefied cloned foreskins. Right. Frankly, who doesn't? Thank you, at Georgia someone, for an amazing facial. I especially liked you reassuring me it would be light on penis, as it was my very first time. So... She deleted that after putting it <coughs> I like the, the, I was just like, oh no, there's probably nude pictures of me out there, but oh god, I can't tell people my beauty regime. I think, so, I think because of the comments you made about, well, I don't know... Here's so just just from listening to you tell that story, I've managed to come up with a television series. Why, right, excellent! I like this. Uh, and it's based around meet the it, four skins. Meet the four skins. <laughs> it's based around <laughs> the PAs of right. uh, of Hollywood. Okay. But it's done like like a mockumentary sort of. I'm I'm a big fan I'm of thinking the mockumentary. Of entourage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's all the PAs and stuff, and they and it's basically just their quest to find the newest thing in <laughs> Hollywood, which is leading to this. So like like fucking Sandra Bullock uses Korean foreskins in her face, like that's that's ridiculous. But yeah, there's yeah. there's got to be more than that. Just like so like oh kale's really, kale, like it's like PA trying to find the the new trendiest diet that's been done by tibetan monks since the, the dawn of time okay and they, so... but it's to see who can like fucking like the, the competition to find like the most fucking elusive like fucking thing that hollywood can okay love so i like that okay, so my pitch on that storyline i like that is you know you ever see phone booth the film yeah yeah you know, like Conor Farrell's character in it, he's like the man about town walking, walking down the street in his suit. And he's like, oh, I've got your Britney Spears tickets. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've got you a fucking audition with blah, blah, blah. But he's just trying to have sex with that girl. Mm. He's not actually really this big Hollywood guy. No. He's just fucking 
a guy. Just a fraud. But he just acts like he is. So yeah, he gets, oh, I can get the tickets. Oh, I know, I know Britney Spears. Like, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah. Um, a guy like that is, is who they're following on the mockumentary. And he's so desperate to hit it big. That that's what his reaction. So one episode would be he sees on Twitter this injecting injecting Korean fucking thing. He's like, right, I need to act like I can get hold of that. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. It's him trying to make it himself somehow or get it. <laughs> where am I gonna get? Where to, am I gonna get fucking tell, two thousand foreskins from? To, to tell people, you know. Oh, by the way, I've got that new foreskin shit the celebrities use. You know that? Um, you know that uh, foreskin uh, facial? Yeah. I suppose. I'm, I suppose like a. I bought that here. <laughs> like a fucking. Only fools and horses, but yeah, a guy in New York fucking to, thinking he's a Hollywood producer. Del boy, the Del boy of New York. <laughs> God, no wonder Keith Sutherland wanted to kill him. I feel bored. That's fucking weird, though, man. Like, That's fucking bizarre, how man. How do you even stumble across that? That's what I'm thinking. Like, who came to her and said, like, Kate, I'm not going to lie. Don't think I'm crazy because I'm going to sound crazy. Yes. But there is a new facial <laughs> that you are just going to fucking love. I heard about it from Sandra Bullock. Oh, I must have tried so many. And look at her face. She's and gorgeous. And used it on her feet. Look at her face. It's all just like, like a like a cardboard, like a pop up pipe, like a pop up like cardboard card. You know, when you fold them into a yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like that. She's pointy. She's pointy all over. Yeah. Her lip well, reminds me of the statue of Jebediah Springfield. <laughs> like that sort of lip. Word on word on the street is that she's been injecting her face with Korean foreskins. <gasps> I know. It's insane, right? I've been using only Scottish a, foreskins. Only a crazy person would be doing that. I've been using. How Scottish. do they get? How do they get them into liquid form? How many can you get? How are they? Well, she was like saying, are they li- just putting like them in a but fucking she was blender? Saying liquidized. I don't want to know. Clone how foreskin. Clone. She said clone foreskin. I thought you said Korean. No, it is Korean. But Kate Beckendale said, "Oh, it's nothing better than having liquefied clone foreskins injected into your face." So that's what that's what her tweet said. You thought I confused Korean. <laughs> You thought I confused Korean and fucking yeah, <laughs> cloned. Yeah, no, I got confused. Cloned? I thought they were Korean. <laughs> yeah, it's the from Clone Land, Joe. Clonadians. The Luigi board all over again. You can't confuse Clonadians and Koreans. It's racist. Clonadians <laughs> from Croatia. <laughs> Nature. So much better than Clone Land. I, I, put, I, I, put no e- Clone Land. I put no effort into mine at all. I came up with the most boring theme. Oh, Westworld is mine, effectively, but clones. Clonadia. Clonadia. That sounds like a sexual transmitted disease. It does. It does, yeah. That's what clones get when they don't use protection. They get Clonadia. The worst thing was, I was like, Greg, think of another one apart from Clone Land. And, so, <laughs> and, I, and I was like, think of, in my head, I'm and, thinking Poland. And I was like, think of a place. And the first place that popped in my head was. Was Portland? (laughs) Clone Land. (laughs) Fuck, I'm playing it again. (laughs) I didn't even try. Like my brain was just like, no, stick with it, stick to it. I'm going to lead you down the same path again with this one. So I'm sticking with Clone Land. Apparently, all right. My my mind has spoken. That's the name of your TV show. (laughs) (laughs) That's my FIFA football team that's going to play against (laughs) Clone Asia. Clone Asia. Clone Asia. Clone Asia sounds like a TV show about a black family. You're thinking of Moesha. No, I am thinking of Moesha. I can see what you're doing. I can see what you're doing. Jesus. You're just thinking a name that sounds like the name of the show. Cloesha. <laughs> Cloesha explains it all. She ain't explaining shit. <laughs> no, it's true. She's not. She's not. I remember with Moesha when she was banned from seeing her boyfriend, the guy from fucking... What's it called, didn't he? Onyx. Yeah, yeah. And, she, and he was banned from seeing him. And I remember she left the house and said to her dad, I'm just going to go get my braids tightened. And he worked at like a fucking barbershop. Yeah. And he was like, no, you're not. And she I was, was like, like, oh, what? hell no. Why not? Why not? Like, and I was like, oh, really? Uh, I know where you're that, going. That was your best move to try and get out of there? It's a weird memory I have of Marisha. Yeah. She's going to get my braids tightened. I'm, I'm going to use the excuse never I have to get out of the house. <coughs> Liz needs to go get, get my braids tightened. She's like, what? You know what? I've been your dropped. pubes? Well, I've been dropping at work. I'm about to get my pubes braided. Well, I've been dropping at work recently from Keenan and Kel, the old classic fucking, I dropped a screw in the tuna. Fucking, that came up the other day as you writing for a while. I have... Um, fucking Keenan and Kel, good fucking work. I do. I have vague memories of Keenan and Kel. Um, I remember them having a party inside the shop. The bomb! That's I what also, they the club. Uh, yeah, I also remember the the one where uh, Keenan moved away and Kel didn't get to his house in time to see him. Wow, uh, that really hit us off. Wow, that, that sounds me... sad, doesn't it? That was sad, man. That really hit me in the feels. That one, in all right. honesty, I um, remember that. I kind of no. do now. Yeah, fuck, that's how it ended. 
Uh, no, no. The next episode was Kel tracking him down and just them being on a completely different scenario. And then that episode, they moved back again. Well, thank God. It's a short time. They just fixed that situation. They really get did. Back to what we know. I don't like fucking with the formula too much. So foreskins. We're gonna go one stage. What yeah, that? foreskins. That could be a show as well. No, I'm talking about. We didn't even start the article. <laughs> oh, we did. We pretty much did. That's pretty much it. Just them talking about whether it's a good or a good thing to be talking about. Well, you know, it's out there, isn't it? Is it something they're just saying to like divert attention back to them, like they're making a movie coming up, or is it just because that's usually how it goes? Though, they're getting back in the media, isn't it? Oh, by the so, way, I'm doing another yeah, underworld. That, that'll film. be it. So, like in a month or so, there'll be some sort of Kate Beckinsale fucking movie drop. Like, oh, she's so hot, rumor. Though. And you know what? If she looks that good with fucking foreskins on her face, well, she has the picture there, doesn't she? Of like her, Ooh. she looks better than the one with a towel on her head. I think. Yeah. Oh, it's not really a towel, it's a Greg, hairband. Greg, that, that's an Indian person. <laughs> Four skins in your fucking head. I mean, why not? Why the fuck not, man? I mean, I but where know. do you I'm go from it. here? It's like, the, you... it's like the bee stings thing, isn't it? Where do like... you go from here in the way of new age fucking, like, beauty eggs care? Like, eggs up your vagina or something? No, they, I think they're already up there. They come out. No, <laughs> no like... They, they fall out. Those fucking... In the, in the cycle. The um, Gwyneth Paltrow eggs. Whatever fuck goop. they were. Yeah, goop. A stupid thing you stick up. Those eggs are... Oh, sounds fucking bizarre. Oh, the idea of Gwyneth Paltrow having sex makes me fucking stomach turn. Right, yeah. Bit pointy again. Like yeah. Sandra, she's like Sandra Bullock's face, but in a body. She, you know... You know no, she about knows, the plastic she, surgery. She, it's like... She looks nice. She looks good. She's good in the Marvel film. She looks pretty. It looks like they took Lois Griffin, <laughs> but tried to make her human, but still pointy. Right. Okay. I'm with you. That's I see what you've done then. Yeah. 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 Another story we've visited a few times before. Oh, so we're just rereading it. Sex robots. Hey! Since their conception. They're really becoming a thing. Robot sex ro- robot. I say robot sex robots. Robot sex robots. Robot sex dolls, many of which are eerily realistic, have raised concerns about whether they should erode the accepted importance of consent. You're idiots. <laughs> so this is the whole thing, isn't it? Where you, where you have to give consent to a fucking sex robot. But the story doesn't go too far into that. Oh, it does really, but it talks about a company. A company is attempting to address those the men, concerns. The men that have these dolls are of no, like, <laughs> they're they're no threat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're really not a threat. They couldn't they couldn't even talk to women, so they spent or, seven grand on a doll. Or, or they're doing it to avert a uh, uh, nasty fetish. Could be. Maybe, you know. They were saying about making them for paedophiles, weren't they? Like kid ones. So at least Yeah, that's bad. Being like, at least it would be with that, not a kid, was kind of Yeah, but imagine that order coming in, though. Was a, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Got, like, you've got to have, like, your morals anyway, just out the window. The good news is, Joe, a company is now attempting to address those concerns by creating the world's first consent-focused sex robot brothel. That's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> Consent focused sex robot brothel where customers have to engage in conversation with the robots before having sex with them. Greg, you know, like when you have like an accident and you're about to die. Yes. I think if that happens to me this year, I'm going to be all right with it. Because <laughs> this world is just fucking gone. The brothel, the brothel will be named Eve's Robot Dreams if it opens. It's currently the cr- it's currently though in the crowd. I got a feeling stage. we can I got a feeling we can come up with a better name for that. <laughs> robot. So I'm trying to think. Robot, robot, robot something. Robot sex. I don't know. If that's uh, like a translation or something. Like robot sex. That's not better at all. He's robot dream is much better. Why didn't you just call it Henry Hoover Robo, and Eve? Robo flop. <laughs> <laughs> come on down, a robot flops. It's, it's like the titty twister. Why is it a ranch? It's, it's, like, it's like the titty twister from uh, from Dust Till Dawn. We got smelly, wo- <laughs> smelly <laughs> robots. We got toaster. <laughs> I got this dilapidated fridge at the back. You're going to love it. The brothel was currently in the crowdfunding stage, but plans to open in California by 2019. Of course. No way are they getting that done that quickly. Guests are required to get to know their robots before spending time in a private setting. So you can either do it at Eve's or when they arrive via an app. Guests can begin building a relationship with a new companion by downloading the app on their phone. This is the site reads when they visit Eve's, they can either interact with the companion bots they've already started to know or one they haven't met yet. This is going to change prostitution. 
men are going to go to like human prostitutes and it's going to just be like they're going to start talking to them and then their hour's going to be up and then they haven't even had sex yet like Come on, it's going to be a weird world man once a relationship exists however the brothel will function like a typical one with a private session costing customers 122.93 quid to have sex with a robot or 7,600 if a customer wishes to be the robot's first. That is a massive jump. Greg, for 93... That's a huge for 93 nine, quid for 93 against quid. seven, almost eight grand. For 93 quid, would you fuck a robot? For 93 quid? <laughs> <laughs> She's here. She's here. <laughs> She's a car. <laughs> She's a robot car. I hope you don't mind. I don't know. 93 quid. Depends. Someone someone else has paid for you. I would for yeah. eight grand. What? Eight grand. But you wouldn't <laughs> spend 93 quid? No. You're I, weird. I thought you meant no. I thought you meant I was going to get paid. No, you're not a robot. When you were like, for 93 quid, would you fuck a robot? I thought you meant like, you know, 500 grand. No, 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 no. You pay. No, I, I thought you were asking if I would be paid. You're not getting paid eight grand to fuck a robot. <laughs> then no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend 93 quid to fuck a robot. If you paid me 93 quid, is what I thought you were Yeah, asking. no, no. I'll give you the money to go and have the experience. <laughs> I'm not giving you eight grand. <laughs> you know what I could do with eight grand? Be a robot's first, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you could definitely be a robot's first. Oh, you bastard. That's big. I can't go over that. Yeah. Come have sex with a robot. It's priced to start at 93 quid just to have sex with it, but it's been fucked by countless men before. Or if you want a brand new robot, eight grand. That's a big fucking increase. Dolls, which cannot interact, are also available for 45 quid. So I guess that we can't interact. So I guess that means they just rub against them. No emotion. Can I name <sighs> her? The main concern at the moment for the brothel, though, is sanitation and cleaning, <laughs> as the robots must be properly sanitized oh. prior to each guest by the staff. Ugh. Oh man, there's gonna be. See, it's not until you start thinking about cleaning it that you really get put off by it. <laughs> so the robots, at Eves, they represent the current male centric desires in the field of sex dolls, according to Unicol Unicron with Harmony. The robots face of Eves created based on the most commonly ordered body and f face styled at real doll. Oh, they've gone all in and made it one that everyone fucking loves. Jesus Christ, I'm just like. In addition to robots that have female forms and a penis. Great. Just in case you haven't made your mind up yet. Or your wife comes along. That's amazing. Will it happen? I keep reading about robot fucking brothels. Do they already exist? Well, they're Do they fucking around. Exist? I always, I have always... you Googled robot sex brothel? I don't know if you want to. Uh, I was just curious. To... Mate, I'm not going to lie. Not the worst thing that's going to be in my search engine. Yeah, well, there you go. That's what I figured. That's why I record on my laptop. <laughs> and I do the research. <laughs> oh my God, from him. Robot sex brothel. Is there? We read about one opening in fucking Amsterdam. No. We read about one coming to no, London. No, that was the uh, the Fellatio Cafe. Yeah, okay. Did that happen? Like, I, I don't feel these things ever happen. We read about them. We're like, oh, man, that's crazy. Can you believe well, it? Got, 2018. And then I've got something here saying the first happened. robot sex brothel in the US slated to open in Houston. When? <laughs> when? <laughs> so angry. I don't know. What is a robot sex doll? And are there in what Paris and Italy? Well, your computer's acting coy. I don't, I don't know what that is, Joe. I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> I don't know what that is, Joe. We just wrote that into my Google. I don't so, there's a lot of stuff about Houston and Vancouver. But there's not one that's there right now. No, I don't think so. Because we've been talking about this stuff for ages. There's a thing called Harmony Robot. That's the thing you said, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was mentioned. Yeah, that was part of this. God, they look real. Yeah, some of them do look real, don't they? Some I still wouldn't... It, there's... Nah. But I know, I can see the fetish or something. I bet so for the fetish, I can see... I can get people who are like... I'm just really into having sex with dogs. They're probably just like, yes, it's going to do good business. Like, I, it's going to do good business. Well, I, I mean, don't there's know, a lot of lonely. Think, there's I a lot of lonely think, people out there. Yeah, I mean, let's put it that way. But it's not even always just lonely. It's just some people. I reckon people who are married or have girlfriends will still go do this. You reckon? All, yeah, I reckon so. It's a fetish thing as well, isn't it? Because it'll be like having a three-way, but not actually having a three-way. And it'll just be like having. Sex with them, a person doesn't move. Like, you know, it will move. So you want, no, that, well, that's the thing. That's the, I, well, I like a bit of movement. Some of it you know does, what I mean? You can. Some does interact. Some of it's like warm, moist. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've read things. <laughs> did you uh, Did you get what you wanted for Christmas? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but no, but like, it's, I just, it's just a weird. 
I just whether it will happen or not, who fucking knows? But it is beyond. That's why I mean, it's beyond people just being lonely. It's like a fetish. Like there'll be married men, not me, going to go do this. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of realise I'm making it sound like I'm like I can't Craig, wait. <laughs> Greg, it's not just like you and one other person that's married in this world. It's just like, well, if it's not Greg, it's got to be the other guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, Keep an eye out. We'll, I, I mean, um, you we'll, know, we're we'll, we'll going to Houston and find it. We're heading towards maybe, for a joke, maybe. We're heading towards 2020, which, in all honesty, always felt like the future. Yeah, it's weird. The isn't future it? date. Yeah. So, like, yeah, why wouldn't we? Imagine it did drastically change. In I think. I think it's. I mean, to be yeah. fair, we already oh, have. Yeah. We already have those like fucking rumba things, like cleaning up the <laughs> cleaning up the houses. You might as well have one to fucking rim your ass or yeah, something. Yeah, it's I the, don't yeah, know. It's to stick your dick in it. People have sex with fucking vacuum cleaners, don't they? Yeah. I've seen that video. It's yeah. fucking You're terrifying. Fucking stick a wig on it. Take it to bed. People are fucking chandeliers for Christ's sake. Do you like, think like people yeah, that do did it. that like there's there's just people there with like fucking just <laughs> they're on they're on the internet with a fucking just Hoover sucking their dick and they see like the real doll and it's just like oh my god this is groundbreaking oh, wow. and then just pulling Henry off yeah yeah Henry you're getting your sexy cousins coming Henry to visit. you're no longer services your services are no longer required no that would be that that'd be I'm really, wipe that smile off your face Henry that'd be a really good like you know like adopt an animal or like a Get, donate money to Oxfam sort of advert but about all the Henry Hoovers being cast aside for sex now the sex dollars are becoming a thing <laughs> they're all meeting by the bins and the alleys crying an army of Henry Hoovers peering through the window and watching their, their, their owners having sex with a doll on the sofa and just being like no I and did everything more, for you and everything get, and getting a more smaller compact Hoover which doesn't really you know which only, will only be used for Hoovering and they're like no why <laughs> And they all rise against the owners and take down the sex dolls. It feels like a family adventure, like an anime, like an animated Disney film. This is what, mate. I'm gonna. This is this is gonna be my 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 slogan for 2019. But the Have internet has ruined Hoovers. people, man. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. It's fucking destroyed. It's given everyone everything they ever wanted, and it's fucking ruined them. Yeah. We're rich beyond our wildest dreams. Information. Oh, absolutely. But, More input. Yeah, that'll be an interesting sequel to Johnny Five. <laughs> I hope nobody just gets a Johnny Five sex spot. I thought that would be your ultimate fucking fantasy. That was on the other morning. I was. Boxing Day. I, was gr- I didn't get to watch it either. I turned over and like, short circuits are, but then couldn't watch it. So I text Reese, my cousin. <laughs> Reese, obviously, who was on, my godson, who was on the podcast. Yeah. Messaged me the other week being like, oh, well, I've got to find it. Obviously, I bang on a lot about short circuit too. Sometimes I bang on about short circuit too. Greg, Greg does mention about um, the other films that he's seen as well, but he's lying. He's only actually ever seen short circuit <laughs> two. <laughs> I've only ever seen short circuit two. What am I looking for? He messaged me, basically quoting a line from the obsession from the film, just being like, "I never thought I would see a, a man, uh, someone's doing a Tarzan screaming off like a bulldozer while fucking grabbing a man out of a boat." And yeah. I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Like I replied, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm watching Short Circuit 2. <laughs> like, yes. He's like, oh, it's great. I love it. Um, and when I text, I saw Short Circuit 1 was on because he's not seen it. I messaged him being like, Short Circuit's on Channel 4 now. And he's like, man, why are you watching it? My mate texts me. <laughs> <laughs> Already passing on the history of Short Circuit to the next generation. I've got... Um, Single-handedly, just, I'm keeping Johnny Five alive. Just, uh, just carrying on from um, the world of sex robots. Uh, got, uh, this is from August last year. 2018 um sex robot fanatic age 60 reveals realism of first harmony romp Ooh, the world's first harmony sex robot owner has revealed how the realism of making love to the artificially intelligent android has shocked him a sex doll collector named under his alias brick doll banger <laughs> <laughs> i love it i fucking love it i love it i love it brick Brick, doll banger. brick doll banger so good has opened up about his experiences of sleeping with harmony a Go life-size brick. cyborg costing around eleven thousand seven hundred pounds okay made by california-based robot uh robot company <laughs> real robotics <laughs> yeah they're the ones that did this yeah, one. yeah yeah harmony is a robotic head capable of speech uh machine learning and autonomous uh, autonomous so right Movement that is uh, as fixed to the autonomously correct sex doll body. Wow. Brick, dad of two from California, is well, the first person... Pregnant? Huh? They get pregnant? I can't <laughs> fuck me. 
Um, it's like Phil Manic is the he's the first person to own a Harmony robot, um, whose development has been years in the making. Wow. The sixty year old told Daily Star Online Oops. Sixty year old <laughs> Um, that te- testing out work of art harmony has been fantastic so far and has changed his perceptions of relationships. Wow. When harmony becomes more advanced, Brick said he would consider entering into a relationship with the android he described as the future. In terms of making love to Harmony, Brick had years of experience trying out various sex dolls created by Real Doll, a world leading sex doll producer and robotics <laughs> affiliate. What's happening? Having first started using six dolls in 2007, Brick said that he spent £151,000 on his hobby. Amazing. Hobby? Fuck. Okay. Imagine Wait. seeing that on the CV. Hobbies include arts and craft, banging sex dolls. <laughs> second. Under, Always uh, second. Under the alias Brick Doll Banger the third. Uh, when Brick spoke to Daily Star Pots Online, he said he had sex with her on five occasions during his first two weeks of owning her. Only five? Yeah, wow. Can't be that good. Can I thought, you? like, in the first... Eight minutes of owning <laughs> Brick doll banger, busy man. Describing the experience, he said the realistic facial expressions uh, she made in the bedroom gave him pause for thought. <laughs> oh, excuse me, why I just stop and thought for a second? I noticed she was giving very extreme expressions, <laughs> like she knew what I was doing. Extreme expressions! You're hurting me! <laughs> they haven't quite got the voice down yet. <laughs> it kind of... I'm hungry! <laughs> no, no, that's not sexy talk. It kind of shocked me. Brick, who moderates a number of forums dedicated to discussing sex dolls and robots, said owners often like to create a fantasy when pleasuring themselves. His preference, he admitted, was watching porn and mentally transposing the moans of the actress into the intimate sex robot. It looks weird, dude. Man, I listened to that podcast, The Butterfly Effect, talking about the porn industry. Yeah. And I swear it was that. Maybe it was a love radio. It was a podcast, and they talked about this company. <laughs> They've got a nude picture. Of course. Oh, the- they blurred it out. Of oh, what? The sex doll? Yeah. Oh, they have blurred it out. It's weird. Um, there was a, there was a comp- Her head's the biggest thing as well. There obviously. was a company on there that we talked about the program. They made your, the porn you wanted. Oh, like, yeah, they yeah. They made bespoke porn. And, like, you can, like... You, write, pay, you pay them. It's quite a lot of money, and you write in what you want, and, like... They, 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 Dude, they, you should send them Rick and Dits. <laughs> yeah. And they would make it, and, and they would make it for you. And there was, like... They had a woman obsessed with ketchup, a guy obsessed with ketchup. So she'd like sit in that ketchup and like squidge her feet. There was one when a guy got hit a stamp collection. Yeah. That he's had for years and he didn't have to do with it. So he asked them to get some like school girls to like throw it on the floor and like destroy it. And they were like, this thing's really, do you really want this to? It's probably worth something. He's like, no, I, I have no use for them. So he wasn't even sex. It was just like girls like ripping it up and like destroying his stamp collection. Bleak. Yeah. Weird, right? Like, yeah. I mean, weird. I mean, whatever gets him off, I guess. It's like some, but like, they would do that. Can you imagine like doing that? Like, I could write in, just be like, "Can you make? <laughs> can you? Can you? Um, I really Can like... you please act out this script yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of Ritz Cricker in Dig Disturbance? The time for China. There'll also be several other characters, including Ed's Benedict. <laughs> How much will this cost to make? Twenty million. <laughs> hmm. It's quite an expensive yes, porno. You, yeah, dinosaurs. about that as well. There's no sex in this, apart yes, from the bits no, where no you two sex. are making noises together. Yes, just like, no yes that's right. There's one, sex, there's one sex scene each each episode. So, talking about Ritz and Dick. Can I just say as well, they've, um, I think people even now on porn sites are beginning to post videos of them fucking dolls. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, was, it has been for a while, the, the doll ones. Yeah, it's been a fetish. So, so, so I heard. <laughs> it's up there. It's out there. Speaking of Ritz Cricket and Dit Sturbins, we won't get the just <coughs> yet because I have got a nice agony lined Ugh. up. But um, we obviously after we released last year, Ritz Cricket and Dit Sturbins, Rise of the Moonwalkers, mm-hmm. our debuted radio play. There's a follow up almost done called Time Vagina. We're nearly there. We're nearly there and it's fucking bonkers. It's a doozy. It's, it's a real bonkers. doozy. So at the end of this episode, we're going to play If you a scene from have it. been waiting for answers. <laughs> To you won't get the ending them. of the previous story, um, keep keep waiting. Yes, keep waiting. We don't really. I mean, you, no, not not for the new one. The one yeah, after that, just keep be, yes. there, there might be some answers in that one. 
Yeah, it's, it's a it's it's a big old journey. So it's got a quite a, it's a get bit, ready to yeah, get confused. Bit, bit more going on the first one, but it's sounding great, and I'm very excited. So we're going to end with a scene which will introduce it into the show. Because I reckon before we get too deep there, we should go into a agony aunt. I know. Well, we should find like a sex doll agony. I have an agony aunt, but by all means, let's look for another agony aunt. A all sex right. doll. Maybe we can do two. You know what? You didn't ask for it. But here's our advice anyway. Excuse me, can I ask you a question? I don't want your advice. I don't want it. I don't need to listen to your thoughts. I don't want your advice. Just speak. You should marry the dog and be happy. I don't need to know what you have to say. Disclaimer. Do not take our advice. If you do, we'll not be held accountable for an edible heartbreak. Thank you. Everywhere I look, there are people bragging about their brilliant sex lives. Oh, classic. From the porn on my phone to my workmates <laughs> who never stop going on about how many times a night they do it, I can't help but feel I'm okay. being left behind. Oh. The truth is that my girl and I have lost our sexual mojo. We just don't click anymore. I still love her as much as ever, but there's just no denying that the light has definitely gone out from our relationship. We're now down to a couple of times a month, and even then we give it a miss because she's a bit, bit tired, feeling a bit ill, yeah. you know. Uh, kinky. <laughs> it, just, it literally <laughs> says here, kinky the problem. The kinky problem is, I don't know. The problem is that we know each other so well that we've got uh, love making down to a very uh, to the very basics. <laughs> These days, our routine is like sex by numbers. I can go through the motions with my eyes shut, and sure, she regularly fakes her orgasm just to get uh, get me off her quicker. I miss the passion, <laughs> the excitement, the fireworks. I work an exceptionally boring job, and I often browse online sex shops and admire the kinky outfits and naughty toys. I'd love to try them. Yet I'm too scared to suggest these, suggest these games to my girl in case she thinks I've gone nuts or I'm a pervert. A few nights ago, we were having a huge group out of the huge. <laughs> we we're having a huge group. <laughs> huge group sex. Look, kinky, things though. escalated quickly. <laughs> a few nights ago, we were out with a huge group of mates. There was loads of booze on tap, and the conversation got round to sex. At one point, I distinctly heard my girl declare that she and I are just as frisky, naughty, and adventurous as ever. This is a blatant lie. <laughs> And goes to prove that she's clearly deluding herself just as much as I am, which is really sad. And <laughs> and we're only in our early thirties. That's it. Wow, I kept thinking it's something you were like, and I got a sex robot. No, I couldn't find that. I just I just went with faking orgasms right, instead. Okay. A bit boring, really. Um, yeah. Well, mate, fuck it. If you're in, mate, she probably just said that to, because she was embarrassed anyway. We can suggest a number of things to spice up your life. Yeah, but that's not the problem. Like Spice Girls, copyright. But it's not even just like <laughs> <laughs> that, is it? It's just it's not even just like spice up. He just, doesn't want to ask her. He doesn't want to do it. He's got the fear. Yeah, he's got the fear that because because things are getting a bit stagnant, he's got the fear that even if he brings it up, he's the pervert. Yeah, exactly. Did you bring it up? Bring it up. Be, uh, that was that was your that was your in then when she said it to her mates. You could be like, why did you say that tonight? You could have brought that up. You could have brought that, and it probably would have ended. been yeah. in. No, that you're absolutely right. It probably would have ended in an argument. And, and as you said, the 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 bit, the, 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 the drinks were on tap. Like fucking you. You know what smashed. he wants to do? He wants to surprise her. Not like full on. Don't surprise her with like a butt plug and like a corset. That just just they're when, called nipple clamps. Ah, oh. yeah, when yeah, when she's sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> Make sure I've got the right size. <laughs> but like, just, you know, when she gets in from work, just fucking take her roughly. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? I'll get dinner ready. Why are you putting my get head off, in the oven? Get off, get off. <laughs> Gotta get dinner ready. We're having burgers. <laughs> yeah, you're having burgers. There's no time for this. Stop rubbing me. Stop jiggling me. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking, it's hard, isn't it? I'm having a cup of tea. It's, it's hard to uh, instigate passion. It is. No, I agree. It really is. Because in know. my mind, whenever I, I, you know, probably should instigate sex more often, but I'm just like, nah, they're just going to, why do they want Why? Why do they want to do that? Yeah, I want to, but what they want to. Yeah. They don't want to. Obviously, I do. Let's go over to them. The Joe Meister is open for business. And like high five them. <laughs> what up? <laughs> You've just instigated sexual intercourse. <laughs> ah. My sex beam got you. That's <laughs> <laughs> what I call my penis. When my, when my penis smelled you, it went to red alert. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's not red alert. It's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not an emergency. Have you it's played fine. red alert, Command and Conqueror? I've, I've got a cream. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My red todger loved the look of you. <laughs> todger. <laughs> Jesus. It sounds like a nickname you give one of the characters in Grange Hill. <laughs> Todger! Todger. <laughs> old Todger is caught with old Mel behind the bike sheds. Old Todger Gibson over there. 
<laughs> Todger Gibson. I like that one. That's one for the list. Yeah, that's one for the list. Todger Gibson. I like that a lot. No. Oh. Well, I don't I'd... mean to say to the guy. He just needs to fucking talk to her. No, this is this, and you know what, Greg? I've done a, I've done a right mischief here, and I've, I've gone and just chosen a really shit agony <laughs> aunt. That's what I've done. Thank God you've got one. Oh, I mean, it's a lot of pressure now. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Well, I'm sure it's better than fake orgasms. I'm having wild sex with my fiance's daughter. Yep. I feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, got... I feel so bad. I realised I wasn't doing my agony aunt voice, so I had to slip into it. Which I can't remember anymore. I feel so bad. But she says she will spill the beans to her mum if I stop. Right, I, I can, I'm stopping you there, because no, she ain't. <laughs> I can guarantee you that. If you're fucking your girlfriend's daughter, the last thing she's going to do is tell someone. Yeah, she's crazy. Because look how many people or got raped by abused. Bill Cosby and didn't come out about it until wow. 40 years later. I'm 48, but I'm often told I could pass for 30. My fiance is 39. It bad. was my birthday recently, and she arranged a party for me at her place. Her son and daughter were there. He's 22, and she is 18. Ah, uh, okay. It's borderline. Right, on, all on the cusp. And they live at home. After the party, instead of going to bed, I had one last drink and lay down on the settee. I fell asleep, but in the small hours, I was woken up by someone giving me oral sex. What?! I assumed it was my wife to be. That's been banned since the late sixties. I assumed it was my wife to be, so I lay there enjoying it. I was shocked beyond words when I lifted the blanket, opened my eyes, and saw her it son was her daughter. <laughs> she kissed me to stop me saying anything. She then climbed on top no, of me. No, she kissed you so you could taste your own dick. And she then climbed on top of me, and I let her make love to me. So it you was were fantastic. raped. He was raped. It's fantastic to have this beautiful young woman having sex with me. The sense of danger and my ego took over. I had an amazing time. I went upstairs to shower, got in bed with my fiance, but pretended to be asleep rather than cuddle up. I could barely look at her in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really well delivered line. I could barely look at her in the morning. It was wrong because the actual line was I barely look her in the eye over breakfast in the morning. Her daughter had a smile on her face the whole time and kept blowing me kisses. It got worse, though. I had arranged to see a mate for a lunchtime drink as my, fi as my fiance was shopping with her mum for the day. Before I left, her daughter came into our room and basically seduced me again. She's fucking on it, isn't she? We started 18. kissing and ended up having sex on her bed. And it, and it has been going on almost daily ever since. Daily? I told her to stop. How are you getting away with this daily? She says she has fallen in love with me and that she'll be upset if we stop. She won't be able to keep it a secret from her mum. I don't know what to do. I'm in love with my fiancé and I do not want to hurt or lose her. Too late. You're banging her 18-year-old daughter. You're so too late. You're banging her 18-year-old daughter. It's going to be hope fucking shitstorm fucking central. It's going to be Stender's Christmas special it is gonna be, when that comes out. He's got to get out, mate. He's got to run away, basically. Fucking Alfie Moon, get out of there. He's got to, he's got to do a runner. He's got to absolutely do a runner. It's the only way out. He would have been fine. Oh, if don't after fucking once, marry her. After once, if he'd like said, I woke up and your daughter was sucking me off. That's that's when you stop it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Doesn't matter how fucking awesome it yeah, feels. Yeah, yeah. You get you 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 fucking fight that feeling, yeah, and yeah. you get out of it because yeah. the, the, what's the, everything <laughs> that comes afterward is going to be so much worse. That's why you need than that like ten minutes. Then you're getting fucking. It's neck. not healthy, man. You can't marry her because you can't. You'll be marrying that lie. You'll be, you'll be marrying, marrying that, that lie. lie, and you won't be able to fucking get away from it. You're living a porno, even mate. if it never comes out. Your life will just be constantly looking over your shoulder. You're living a porno. You're absolutely wow. living a porno right now, and it's and it doesn't end well. There is no Jesus happy Christ. ending. You got you got to go. You got to fucking leg it. Yeah. With no explanation. She will tell them what she got. She will, yeah. One hundred percent. And she she'll say that you raped her. Yeah. Fuck, man. What oh, you situation. are. Just kill yourself. You and know what? Having so many times, and you're gonna marry oh, the. It makes me. Ah, oh, no, no, no. It actually, no. gives me anxiety. This one. This, is, this one's a horrible position to be in. Fuck her mum. Oh shit! Hang on, wait. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we can't give that advice. <laughs> fuck her dad um, <laughs> fuck her son <laughs> tick all the boxes yeah go for get the son get family bingo yeah why not go for the son that'll be you know kind of on them as they'll well they'll never man, see it, it? and it, you know what it'll be such a shock that she won't even fucking realise that you've also been fucking her daughter me too at last 
Yeah, that, that, that one actually... And you all live happily oh, ever after. What, what a situation, man. That one actually makes me feel that is That does stress me out. Anxiety-driven, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. um... Mate, fucking... I mean, yeah, don't marry. I think... I kind of want to... I kind of want to th- give this... I want to kind of... I kind of want to help him get him out of it. <laughs> even though he's not real. Um, it's, leave. Uh, you, you have to. You fucking got to get out. Him. Or you just tell everyone, then you leave. With no explanation. Look at look at the episode of Californication where Hank Moody told his wife that he banged a fucking yeah. 16-year-old girl. Yeah, look yeah. what happened to him. That's a great bit in that episode. It's all fucking silent and shit. Yeah, and he punches yeah. the cop. Punches he's, play, the cop. he's playing that cover of Rocket Man, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Cool scene. Um, yeah, fucking... Yeah, t- get out of there, man. Tough. It's, get um, the fuck out of there. It's... Yeah, I, you, that's you just have out. to. That's coming the fuck out. I mean, there's no way that, that the girl is going to. She, right now, the ball is not fully in her court. She, she might she's, get so she's and she's upset. gonna keep she's gonna keep quiet. Yeah, but I know she might get upset one night. And just if be he's like, yeah, if he even so much as suggests, she's a drinking age, mate. She's a drink, it might not be her. It only takes her to tell someone else. Yeah, it doesn't. It's not solely with her. What if she, she might yeah. not. How 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 she's tight? She's blatantly told like her friends or someone. How tight are her lips? She would tell someone, and somebody else will tell someone. That's a big fucking secret. If you, I'm 18 and I've been sleeping with my mum's Greg, fiance. If you came to me and told me that you've been fucking your mum's boyfriend, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to keep it to myself. <laughs> I'd definitely tell Ed if you hadn't. <laughs> Greg's been fucking his mum's boyfriend. What? <laughs> I was like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird situation. Weird d- man, he's he's fucked. He's he's really yeah. really fucked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't like to say it, mate, and we we like to give bad advice, but you're in a tight spot. Yeah, and you. You got yourself to blame on this one, I'm afraid, mate. Like, well, no, I'll I'll go against that. No, he's but he's been doing it daily. That's I mean that's bollocks. Yeah, isn't it? There's no way daily. there's no way you're you, getting that away argument, with it. There's that no argument way that she climbed on him holds up when she climbed on him. There's, no, that is it, it was And all, even then it's not a great defence. The, the, the ball was in his court when he woke up getting head from yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As yeah. soon as he let her climb on yeah, top. Yeah. Yeah, and now it's been daily since. That's not he can't use daily's gold. bullshit. He Why do you keep saying daily? It's, it's not happening daily. There's no fucking way. He says it. He says it. There's no way they are getting away with this daily. Well, a lot, a lot, no of time, a, a fucking lot. way. He says daily, but it's fair to say that it's gonna be a lot. Maybe the mums at work and they're both alone. Could be easy. <sighs> I mean that makes sense, but yeah. I just don't feel like that's the kind of sort of why is she marrying a guy with no I job? Don't know. Like, I don't... Maybe he works from home. <laughs> <laughs> he works from home. <laughs> Blind logic to it. He's a Samaritan. But, no, he's a terrible one. But, uh, like, he, yeah, he's fucked. And he's I, absolutely and I don't. And I'm saying, he, that's why I'm saying the bottom stuff is not so much like, oh, poor guy. Like, it is a bad situation, but. The only thing that he could do happens, mate. was you set up. dick in your fucking fiance's the, young daughter. The only thing that he could do was is to set up a camera. <laughs> Right, but he's already done it so many times. No, yeah, no, 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 no. but no. Put hear me out, hear me out, right? So he sets up a camera so that like he's. There's some porn I made. <laughs> How was he gonna explain that? I avoided her. I filmed us having no, sex. No, because then he can so like she'll come into his room where you know camera's hidden, it's recording and stuff, and he can just be like no, and he'll just be like what, and I'm just like no, I've said no before and I'm saying no again. No, I don't want this. And she'll be like, I'll tell my mum, and they'll be like, oh shit, she's blackmailing him. Oh, this isn't his fault at all. I love you. My daughter can go and live on the streets like a dirty whore. And then, boom, bosh, sorted. <laughs> but we he's, had he's got to play her game. He's got to play the daughter's game to get out of this. Well, That's how you get out of it. I don't think you play the fucking game. You won't get away with that. It play won't... the awful, horrible game. You won't get away with it. He they, can play they, the game. They'll do a DNA test if they want to. Play the game. <laughs> Play the, the game. game with the DNA test. No, that Michael Douglas film. <laughs> yeah, play the, the game, game. Play the game. So yeah, get out of there. Play I the think, game. I think go change your life. Live. Play the else. game. Start by maybe play her game. Delete your Facebook. That's a good start. Oh yeah, that's you always you a good. You don't want that shit happening. Yeah, block block people that you don't want to start talk to. Start preparing for the worst if you can. Yeah. You don't want to be online when that shit drops. Perhaps start. change your name to Brick start, Dingleberry start, or whatever your fucking name was. Start start preparing for yourself. I was listening to that. I told you that podcast. Um, Love and Radio, where they have the um, the phone line where you call in and leave a message, like a, a confession. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they play them. It's fucking, it's pretty, I love, I do love this one. They're really interesting. And one woman was like, I'm um, in a really abusive uh, marriage and have been for like seven years. Yeah. Like, it's very abusive. What he doesn't know is, is I've been saving my child payments, whatever. And I've actually bought a house in New York. And in the summer, 
I'm leaving. And then hangs up the phone. And I was like, oh, we don't know what happened. Wow, yeah. But that's like what this guy needs to do. He needs to secretly start preparing to leave so the area for yeah, the sharpish. But he's got, he's not got a lot of time because he's due to marry this woman. We don't know when. So a lot of his money is going to be going on a wedding. Don't know when though. Yeah. I mean, he, he could, he could lie and say but he has like... he doesn't like, have to go buy a house. But I mean, like start preparing to somewhere to go. <laughs> I, uh, I worked with a guy in Jessup's once who, uh, who said that he, he had a boyfriend and uh, one day he received a text message from one of his boyfriend's friends just telling him that he'd passed away. He hadn't. The, wow. The person's boyfriend lied and said they had died to get out of their relationship. Wow. That's how intolerable they were as a person. Wow. That's There you go. Fake your death. Be like that canoe bloke. <laughs> oh, yes. Canoe bloke. Canoe man. Canoe man. Oh, man. Well, yeah, I, I think that's what we're saying. Well, there's we? two There's two, two options we're of advice. Saying, right. uh, get the fuck out of there or play the game. Play the game, yeah. So that's it. Play her, play her at her own game, and then you can have everyone under your control, and if you could control. end up, you could end up with a wife. King. <laughs> you could end up with a wife, mum, and a girlfriend, daughter. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice for you? That's wow. the dream. That was uh... play the game, live the dream. You can be a winner <laughs> in the game of life. <sighs> well, that was a crazy episode. That was a roller coaster, that <laughs> one, wasn't it? Covered a lot of areas. There were highs and lows. There was fucking sex. There was fucking sex chandeliers. Sex, sex chandelier. Is that not a song? Oh, no, the song is just called Chandelier. I, sex uh, chandelier. I think we need to do. I think we need to do another porn episode. Yeah, I think so. Can you know, a porn episode. But we need to find diff- another porn person. We need to uh, Ellie. Not so we'll a porn fly. Person. We'll fly Ellie back. Be prepared to have some uh, rather risque inbox messages. <laughs> just like when you first appeared. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> that was bad. Um, so yeah, to play us out, so we're going to play a scene from Time Vagina. Yeah, we are. Which, of course, is what it is. It's the story of the Time Vagina. It's, that's exactly what time it says. Time Vagina the, reopens. That's exactly what it says on the tin. This scene it sets up nicely. Um, one of the the start of the plot for Time Vagina in a Grimwood Asylum, where we meet two characters we've not seen before: Barry Custard and Emmanuel. Doctor Emmanuel Saucy. Sorry, Doctor. Yes. Yes, doctor, let's not let's not Emmanuel let's not hide his credentials in Greenwood Asylum, and this is where like, the plot really p- kicks off in the uh, radio play. It really steps up and really, notch. really uh, sets up a letter. What's going to be going on? It's a really fun scene. We really enjoyed doing this, um, and a little taster of what's coming up. It's going to be fucking stupid. It's going to be the most ridiculous thing you've heard. I could, that's all I can say. We've got some uh, some very famous voices. I hope so. Now. Yeah, we have got a few soaps in the fire, but we have done this time. Due to like not only time restraints, but just having more time to prepare, we've done most of the voices ourselves through this one, haven't we? Why you pull that face? I uh, I made the mistake of typing in sex doll into a porn site, and right. uh, I have just no. Nah. Okay. I think I'm done. We've done a lot of the voices. I'm just going to just, uh, if we could just wrap this up, I have yeah. to go and cut my cock off. Um, <laughs> we've done a lot of the voices ourselves this time around, so we've definitely had a fucking lot of fun recording it. I, You know what? This time around, I feel like it's, I've, en- I've enjoyed doing the, fo- the voices more because they don't obviously sound like us as much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's very obviously us. Yeah, yeah. But like it's, it, it, I feel like we're, we're we didn't just wing it on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel I feel like we've put a bit more like a bit more effort into the characters because there's so many new ones yeah. and like there's only so many voices that we can actually do. Yeah. Like, uh, but in general, it's been uh, it's been really good fun. It's been a laugh as well. Yeah, and it's, we're gonna got the last few scenes to finish, and then I need to write the third and final. We'll be going. Uh, yeah, we're going. <laughs> uh, we do. We do have. Uh, we do have uh, a guest appearance lined up. Yeah. Um, and potentially a, a few others. We just definitely for had Ed bits in there. <laughs> Ed's been in there, Classic. yeah. Ed was in the first one. Swiss Army, Swiss Army. Ed's been in there. He was ready, fucking ready to hold us up for our new radio. Oh, he's play always adventure. up for it. He always, uh, he loves being creative. It's good. So uh, thanks for listening. I've been uh, Greg Sex Chandelier Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've been Joe Harmony Robot Jackson. Oh, sexy! Enjoy the scene. It's what, I'm, it's what I was made for, Greg. It's what I was made for. <laughs> Enjoy the scene from Ritz Cricker and Dick Disturbance in The Time Vagina. Good day and greetings to you. Ah, uh, bonjour, Barry. Busy night keeping us safe? Good evening, Dr. Saucy. You on tonight, is it? Oh, oui, oui. I will be swinging background later for a game of how you say Connect Four. Oh, great. I do love it when you're on shift. The night flies by, Dr. Saucy. Oh, we should really branch out to another game, no? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what Ma says. 
Uh, I, I mean, that is that is not the motto we use here at Grimwood Asylum. Oh, yes. Uh, on that note, I need to check out our patient in room uh, 23. Okay, Doc. Well, you know the rules. Sign in, Dr. Saucy. Ah, but of course. Hey, uh, Doc. Oui? Uh, who you got in there, Dr. Saucy? I mean, really, I, I hear the rumours and stories, but well, what's the deal? Oh, come now, come now. Surely Barry Custard isn't one to listen to uh, gossip and hearsay. Well, I've sat outside this door, Dr. Saucy, for a few years now. Never seen anyone apart from you and Dr. Spy Cam coming and going. Never seen a patient. Can't help but wonder. I can appreciate a curious mind, my friend, but in this case, you best start laying those thoughts to rest. I would hate to see you end up on reception duty. <laughs> Understood, Dr. Saucy. Sorry for overstepping my boundaries. No, no, it, it is quite all right, quite all right. Uh, you have your key ready? Yes, in uh, my mark. Three, two, one, and... <laughs> What was that? The wall blew open, Dr. Saucy. What? Oh, no. Barry, close the door. Lock from 23. What? I, I, I need Emergency key. shutdown. I need, I need your key, Dr. Saucy. Emergency shutdown. Not so fast. It's Benedict. <laughs> Get him, boys. You heard X, grab him. You don't know what you are doing. Don't go in there. I didn't ask for your opinion, Doctor. You, you, you need to leave. Don't go in there. It's not too late. Just go. Gag him, boys. No. Please. Right. Let's go collect our Easter egg. <laughs> I hate this place. Hate it? Why? It's been a museum to Grimwood's greatest villain since the town was built. <laughs> like who? Dickie Walters, Harrison Plum, and of course, Grimwood's biggest serial killer, the Mosaic! Built up quite the death count back in the 1800s. I've never heard of him. You need to expand your mind! Hey, boss! Yes? What is this? Our payload, boys. It's just a girl in a bed. This isn't just any girl. <laughs> Hello, sleeping. Aren't you pretty as a picture? X, is she the one we're after? Oh, yes. I need her removed carefully. All this equipment she's hooked up to needs to come with us. She's in a chemically induced coma. <laughs> and that's how we want her to stay. Get her in the van, boys. The egg timer is ticking. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Fen Grimwood, not watch it drown. Don't you have fucking wives to back? You, you son of a. Seeing 
Guys podcast is part of Podnose, the UK's leading independent entertainment podcasting network. For episode archives of the All Seeing Guys and all of the shows on the network, visit us at www.podnose.com. You can also follow us on Twitter via at Podnose or send us an email via admin at podnose.com. Thank you.